Among expats and travelers from afar, Thailand is a popular destination. With the Southeast Asian nation offering beach resorts and small villages to the big cities such as Bangkok. While there now is a variety of options of travel to Thailand, your trip to the country might begin with a flight to one of Bangkok's two major airports, with Suvarna Myumi the newest and the busiest in the country. Or if you decide to fly a budget airline, you'll likely go through Don Muang, which just so happens to be Asia's oldest operating airfield. Today, it plays a major role in the budget travel scene in Southeast Asia, but in its past, it has played a pivotal role in the development of the aviation scene in Thailand. And for that reason, this will be the next part of the Asia's Air Hub series. Before the construction of the Don Muang Airport, there was a general interest in aviation in the early 1900s when Thailand was still named Siam. The interest in aviation grew from the flight of Belgian aviator Charles Van Den Born, who did a demonstration flight on the grounds of what is today the Royal Bangkok Sports Club in 1911. Van Den Born's demonstration flight generated the interest in airplanes, which as a result the Siamese government sent military officers to Europe to train to become the forefathers of what is today the Royal Thai Air Force. Which is a rather interesting history of itself and if you really want to hear that story, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. For a while in the 1910s, a part of the Royal Bangkok Sports Club would host a Sa Prathum airfield during the years of 1913 and 14. This would be a temporary solution as the permanent plan was to develop an airport which would also be used as a home for the military flight operations. The location was selected 24 kilometers north of Bangkok in the district of Don Muang and with that, Asia's oldest airfield opened to military operations in 1914. Thai military aviators were at the time the pioneers of aviation in the area and were already making intra-Asia flights to areas such as French Indochina, which parts of today would become Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. It wasn't until 1924 when the first commercial flights arrived at Don Muang, which happened to be operated by Dutch KLM. For much of its early years, Don Muang would be involved in local and regional conflicts as it was a military base including the Boerdet Revolution in 1933 and World War II. After a brief occupation of the British Royal Air Force between 1945 and 1946, there would be a shift that would spark the beginning of the civil aviation industry in Thailand. In 1947, the first airline, Siamese Airways, would launch its first flights initially domestic operations from Bangkok to Chiang Mai via Phitsanaluk and Lampang. The first domestic flights were then followed by the international services between Bangkok and Penang via Songkla. Siamese Airways happens to be the predecessor of what is today Thai Airways, the national carrier of Thailand, who would go on to be a major tenant at Don Muang for the last half of the 20th century. Thai Airways would be joined by many foreign carriers operating at Bangkok as the tourism industry in the country grew and developed. While serving as a civil aviation hub of the country, it also still maintained its role as a military base for the Royal Thai Air Force. But it was also involved in the Vietnam War with the U.S. Air Force as a command and logistics hub. As air travel grew throughout Asia, Don Muang would be at its peak the second busiest airport in Asia and the 14th busiest airport in the world, serving around 38 million passengers in the year 2005. Anticipating the demands on the aviation industry, especially with the growth of air traffic at Don Muang, Thai officials would plan and open a new international airport, Suvarna Bhumi, located around 40 kilometers east of Bangkok in 2006. With Suvarna Bhumi offering a bigger facility, airline operations would be shifted to the new airport, with Don Muang shifting to a secondary airport role, keeping its facilities and limiting the operations to charter services. Symbolically, the three-letter airport code used by the Don Muang Airport, BKK, was given to Suvarna Bumi. Following the loss as the primary international air hub of the city of Bangkok, it didn't take long for the Don Muang Airport to get a new role in Thai aviation. Suvarna Bumi met its own issues such as high operating costs and runway repairs, prompted Don Muang to be temporarily reopened in 2007. Initially a temporary solution, it would then become permanently open led by budget airlines shifting their operations to Don Muang. Today, Don Muang plays an important role in Bangkok's aviation scene as a budget airline hub, which saw its highest numbers of passenger traffic in 2019, serving 41 million passengers, despite having a design capacity of 30 million. The facility hosts two runways and three terminals, 
with Terminal 1 primarily serving as the International Terminal and Terminal 2 for domestic services. The third terminal is currently not in use though there is a 38 billion Thai baht plan to develop it which would give the airport an added capacity of 18 million per year by 2025. Being a budget carrier hub, it is the primary hub in Bangkok for Thai budget carrier Nok Air. However, in recent years, it has become home of the Thai-based subsidiaries of the likes of Air Asia and Lion Air, showing just how competitive it is for the airlines in Thailand. With Thai-based carriers struggling, one factor could be found at Don Wang where Thai Air Asia and Thai Lion Air offer more capacity on their flights out of Don Wang compared to locally-based Nok Air. The airport also still maintains its legacy as a military base for the Royal Thai Air Force, which, on a random note, there also just happens to be a golf course in the middle of the two runways. Since its reopening in 2007, its biggest challenge has been the capacity, operating well more than it, the numbers that it was designed to accommodate. This problem is furthered with the limits on adding more room to the airport, including a new runway. This problem has been highlighted in a request in 2019 by the airports of Thailand, the main operator of Don Wang, who is seeking the budget airline serving the airport to use larger jets in a bid to reduce the numbers of aircraft landing and departing at the airport. Another issue of the airport has been space, specifically for parking aircraft as it also has been somewhat in airplane graveyard with unused jets which do take up space. Like the congestion issues, this has been something that has drawn more of an ire of the airports of Thailand in, during the mid-2010s. For travelers, the main issue has always been the congestion, which has been documented in local media reports. In terms of fixing this issue, the Thai government has been considering a third airport to serve the area, the Tiutapau Airport. And Don Wong is actually still involved in this project with a rail link planned to connect both Bangkok and Suvarnabhumi with Tiutapau which also happens to be going under its own development work. In the meantime, Don Wang continues to serve its renewed purpose even after more than 100 years of operation and likely will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. I definitely hope you enjoyed this video as this is a part of the Asia's Air Hub series I am working on, featuring the history of the development of Asia's busiest airports. I've already done the likes of Tokyo, Narita, Seoul, Incheon, Beijing capital and Singapore's Changi, which I will link in the description along with the end screen. These airports play a major role in their country and the region as a whole. So if you have any suggestions as to what AirHub should be done next, feel free to leave a suggestion and the reason why in the comment section below. In the meantime, thank you for watching and have a great day.